What's going on, YouTube? JT Javorn here, and welcome back to another edition of After the Movie. So, I just got back from the movie theater. I just saw the new film, The Black Phone, directed by Scott Derrickson, starring Ethan Hawke and a few other actors, mostly unknown child actors. And I thought it was pretty good. So, I was going to record this with my friend Jordan, do a little After the Movie while we're sitting in the car. However, unfortunately, some issues went on with my phone, which I just kind of launched right over here. Uh, it ran out of space, and then when I tried to like go back and try and delete the videos, they weren't popping up there, and there's some weird like technical stuff there. So needless to say, couldn't get my friend Jordan involved, but he did enjoy the movie overall, and he regrets he's not able to make his standard, typical Last Jedi joke in this video. Uh, Would have involved something with the character of Finn, because he always has to make some sort of plug to that movie, because it just... It never leaves, so it's like his little ongoing thing. But anyways, uh, for those of you who just don't care about all that, here's me. I'm going to be talking about the movie The Grabber, and uh, I thought it was pretty good. I, I thought it was actually a very entertaining horror movie, uh, slash thriller, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Scott Derrickson definitely has some talent as a director. Now, I didn't. I don't like all of his horror movies. Uh, I don't like Hellraiser 5, although there is some unintentional comedy with that thing, and you can see that kind of sprinkled in throughout some of his other movies. Like, this one definitely has a lot of comedy surprisingly into it like there were some parts where i genuinely laughed pretty hard at some bits uh i mean it's got a little bit of dark humor thrown in there too but let's go ahead and talk about the plot of this thing so i guess this is based on the black phone sh short story by somebody named joe hill uh it was written by scott derrickson and somebody named c robert cargo i got the information pulled up right here as i go through this video I mean, might as well, since I'm just not uh, doing this right in the car without anything. So, uh, but basically the plot of this thing is the movie is set in the 1970s, and it definitely reminds you of that continuously throughout it. There's a lot of uh, 70s song choices, a little 70s nods, and all sorts of stuff going on, like from the stuff they're watching on the TV uh, to the opening of the movie, which has free ride playing, which I'm like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I'm, I'm in a pretty good, upbeat mood. And then bam, kid gets abducted, and then we have a title sequence that feels straight out of the early 2000s, like you'd seen a Saw movie. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's that. But basically, in this one, it's about two kids primarily two kids uh finney and gwen who are two siblings who have uh an abuse live with their abusive alcoholic father uh finn is kind of picked on and bullied but he has a friend named robin who kind of looks out for him he's like the toughest kid at school and he's you know like this martial arts ass kicking kid and what happens is his friend robin goes missing and then finn is kind of like led to getting beat up by other kids and then one day on his way home from school uh he gets abducted by ethan hawk who is known as the grabber and the grabber also has these like little black balloons in his car it's kind of his trademark and he's also been abducting other children in the area he you know abducted and killed his friend robin uh and several other kids and so finn is kind of trapped in this basement and you have the grabber just kind of watching over him and just really weird and bizarre ethan hawk is actually quite good in this thing and after watching the movie i would really like to see him take on the role of a batman villain i think especially mad hatter ethan hawk mad hatter I think we got something going on here. I think there's some pretty good potential with this thing. Uh, let this guy play villains some more often. I think he does pretty well at the roles. So there's that. But also when he's in the basement, there is a phone on the wall. And for whatever reason, it's disconnected. And it doesn't really work. But he's able to hear it. And as he picks it up, he hears, like, the voices of, like, the victims of the grabber who are there to kind of give him, like, kind of help guide him through the whole situation, try and hopefully allow him to get out of there alive and survive the whole thing. Meanwhile, his sister is having psychic dreams, just like her mother kind of used to before she ended up uh, committing suicide and dying. It's never fully explained where the psychic visions come from or why the phone's like that. You're just kind of it's kind of left up to your imagination. So we're we're never a lot of that's never explained. So we just kind of just leave it up in here. And if you're willing to kind of roll with the concept, I think it makes it a little bit more engaging and entertaining. I mean, in some ways, I'm kind of wondering how does this all work? Like, what's really going on in this thing? But like I said, it's kind of left up to the audience for interpretation it's a bit of a mystery going on you're just supposed to kind of roll with it but like i said this thing like i said set very well it's it's a pretty effective movie it's doesn't overstay its welcome it's simple to follow despite some kind of glaring plot issues at some points i mean the police are you would think that they would have like curfew instilled or be constantly driving around monitoring like all the students who keep mysteriously getting kidnapped in the area but they don't like their main advice and lead is just to kind of find this uh this girl who knows all this bits of information but uh, they're not constantly monitoring 
I don't exactly know. Uh, maybe they are. It's just uh, not really fully showcased in the movie per se. But what, what is showcased quite well is a short and effective uh, thriller. Like I said, it's just over an hour and 40 minutes long. Ethan Hawke's quite well. All the child actors do their jobs pretty well. Uh, the main actor is you pretty solid. He's been, he has to kind of learn to stand up for himself. That's kind of the thing that he has to deal with in this movie. And he does that. And then you have his sister who actually has a lot of funny parts in this movie. Like this girl swears like a sailor. And a, a lot of the time I found myself laughing quite a bit at some of the things that she says. Uh, she plays the vulnerable side quite well, but she does the, like some of the unintentional or maybe intentional comedy at sometimes quite well. I thought she was one of the real standouts in the movie. And then the grabber also has his brother uh, played by the guy who played uh, Eddie in uh, It Chapter 2, the adult version of him. And so the grabber and him, like he's, he's staying at the grabber's house, but he doesn't realize that all the stuff's going on in the basement. And he's also like getting really high on cocaine throughout like most of the movie. And he's trying to figure out like what's going on with the grabber. He's trying to get to the bottom of the situation. And he's just, he's got some funny bits to him. So at this point, I kind of want to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, I recommend checking it out. It's well shot. It definitely captures that 70s vibe to it. It's effect, It's an effective thriller. There's moments of tension and suspense. You're just really kind of rooting for these kids to get out of this situation because Ethan Hawke plays a very uh, well-done villainous performance. And I like the design of the character, too. He's always wearing these masks, and he pulls off the cuckoo crazy thing quite well. I, I really think he could play a good Mad Hatter. So cast Ethan Hawke as the Mad Hatter. I want to see this dude playing more villains. So at this point, we're getting to spoilers because the ending, there's just kind of leaves me scratching my head a little bit by how it ends so basically after he gets all the courage from his friends and all that he manages to choke out and basically strangle to death the grabber and kill him his sister used her psychic abilities to kind of locate where he's at as well as the various bodies and all is well the father apologizes i don't know if he's fully going to try and redeem himself over his abusive and alcoholic tendencies towards his kids but he's just kind of left at the end of the movie begging for forgiveness or over like the whole thing. So there's that. And then in one of the more strange kind of scenes, like, so Finn kind of likes this one girl and he goes to school and he's treated with more respect because earlier in the movie, he was kind of bullied and he sits next to this girl that he likes. And she's like, welcome back, Finny. He's like, sup, call me Finn. And it's like, I almost want to put on the sunglasses and go, yeah you know that song where they do that but uh yeah it was kind of a weird way to end the movie i mean this kid just murdered some boy well, he killed somebody in self-defense and was tortured for days basically but he's just like yeah i'm a badass such a weird like tonal like way to end this movie you'd think he'd be kind of getting some much needed psychological treatment over his traumatic experiences but what are you going to do? Uh, so that, that kind of left me scratching my head a little bit, like kind of chuckling a bit too, because I'm just like, you'd think something like that would happen. You know, this kid would, I, I get they want to edit it on an interesting note where he just kind of talks with his crush and all that, but come on, he just, he just killed somebody. He, he got to need, I would think he would need a little bit more time unless uh, enough time kind of passed and he already got that therapy and they just never covered that in the movie. But I, I, I think it's just kind of a weird way to kind of, like, tonally, it's it's such a jarring shift that it feels a bit out of place. I mean, we have this really intense scene with Ethan Hawke trying to kill him, and he ends up killing Ethan Hawke, and then it's literally just in the next scene after he's reunited with his sister, sup, I'm Finn, I'm a badass. So, I don't know. That felt a bit jarring to me in terms of, like, the, the tonality shifts with it. But I do think the movie was pretty good overall. So, I do recommend this thing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh go check it out and if you have seen it let me know what you thought of it in the comments i can't even talk right now let me know what you thought of it in the comments section down below so be sure to hit the bell for notifications like this video share it to friends or or you know what I, I don't even know what my outgoing catchphrase is it's almost 1 a.m i'm super tired i have not slept very well these past like week or so and i think i'm gonna go crash and then i'll probably do a live stream tomorrow at some point or today i don't know take it for what it's worth but go check out the black phone i think it was quite good all right well that's all i gotta say as always take care now bye bye then and i will see you all in the next video peace